everyone. Today, again, your soul speaks Tuesday. It is almost one o'clock. I'm close to it. Um, I hope you're all doing great. And today I actually want to talk with you about a topic that I know many of you struggle with as well as many of my clients that I have worked with and that I currently work with that seem to struggle with food. Now, those who know me and know my family and my story, food is a huge topic in our house. My husband is a certified nutrition counselor and master herbalist and is writing his dissertation right now about gut and your digestive system. So he and I work a lot together. He reads my books, I read his books, he teaches me, I teach him. So in a lot of cases, it overlaps really, really well, and we can do work together. So today I wanna to talk with you about nutrition, the impasse problem of overeating, binge eating, cravings, food, and weight. It is very, very common for impasse who, um, that we struggle with weight problems or eating unhealthy that then ends up in physical um, illnesses or other problems. So we all know food is energy and therefore food is also medicine, right? And as you know, empaths are very prone to energy. So we are also very aware of food, okay? I hope, um, just in case anyone is listening, if you do, is the connection good? Can you give me a little hint to see if the connection is good? Because I know last times um, the internet was, last week the internet was not good. It happened to be better this week, but I don't know how it is today. So if you're online and hear me or see me, uh, maybe give me a little bit of a, a hint and to set, let me know if it works today or not. If you can actually hear me. Um, so food, it can actually stabilize your whole sensitive system or it can really can break down your sensitive system. So they're either way, either that or that. Okay. And so most of the time what happens with empath and food and we try to diet, most diets do not work unless they're based on spiritual spirituality. Otherwise they don't work for us because they don't really um, talk to the actual problem of why we crave certain things or why there might be some extra pounds on us or what that really means for us. And so forget diets. Um, if they're not spirituality based, they probably will not work for empath. Okay. That's a study that have, um, that have been going on with different psychologists and scientists who try to understand more of the system of highly sensitive people. So it's not just me making that up. It's actually, there are some studies out there that show that. Um, from history, we know in the early 20th century, most healers actually appeared to be obese. And when people were interviewed about why they think they are, the answer usually was that they felt that they needed to, to be able to protect, them, protect themselves heavily from, um, the problems of their clients that they work with or the energy that they are taking on. So it was more of a protective wall for them to be obese. It's not that they really wanted to or didn't know a way out. They saw it as a necessity. So over the last couple of years, there has been more and more research done on the problem of highly sensitive people, especially healers. And as we know, empaths are healers of some sort. Okay. So that will speak to you as especially. So overweight with impasse is always more like a protective wall, as I already said. It's not necessarily a problem of, um, well, no, I can't say that. It is a problem of food choices too. <laughs> but often we just don't even know why we crave for certain foods, okay? So that will give you a little bit of an ease and a little bit of a way out that there is actually a solution if that is what you are um, struggling with. Um, let's say, really, who can relate to reaching for food, especially when we feel a sensory overload is happening? I do. And you want to know how would I go to? Yeah, that's how I open chocolate. Yeah, that, that, that just shows the desperation that I go through when I don't have chocolate and then something shows up. 
I'm, at least, I mean, come on, it's an excuse. At least it's organic, right? It, it's, it's organic, but it is milk chocolate. Should be dark chocolate, but it's not. And there's not much left. So, yes, yes. I, I, I am part of that, too. I may not look like it, but yes, trust me. The only really good thing about my body is it's not the metabolism that's high. It's actually that my muscles are always tense. And that's also part of the empath problem. My muscles always work, even at night. I feel like I run marathons, which is also not very ha um, healthy. Um, but it's something that I'm dealing with right now or that I'm working through right now. So that's what burns all the stuff that I eat that I probably shouldn't eat. Otherwise, I probably would weigh 20 more pounds. It is really a problem, and I see it with a lot of people, especially in this area of being an empath. So the solution for empath eaters is grounding and protecting in a more healthy way. As I said, food is energy. We can feel the vibration of each food. Therefore, we have to really make more conscious and healthy food choices for ourselves. Okay? And so it's something that we need to be aware of. Um, pay attention to what triggers overeating for you. Um, it might be good to just have a journal when you realize you're overeating, what happened? Maybe you had stress with your coworkers. Maybe you, had, you have stress at home with your partner or with your children. Or um, uh, maybe a depression is coming on. Or you're taking on too much from your clients. Like All of those triggers can be part, can be part of overeating. Um, there are a couple questions that I found that I want to introduce to you for those. Are you a food empath? It's actually quite interesting. And do you overeat when you when you're over when you're emotionally overwhelmed? Yes. Do you turn to sugar, carbs, and junk food to self-soothe? Um, I don't eat junk food. My body doesn't do very well with it, but sugar and carbs, yes, I'm a carbs person. I could eat bread and pasta all day if I wanted to. Sugar is my big problem. Um, I try not to have any in the house unless there comes a huge package from Germany with German chocolate and then I, it's gone within a day. It, it really is. So sugar is a problem for me. Are you highly sensitive to the effect food has on your body? Yes. I have a nervous digestive system because of it for years now. Um, especially when I feel stressed or when I um, feel frustrated, like all the emotions going crazy, then my digestive system literally gives out on me and I suffer constipation and other stuff or I get rashes. So yes, my body is highly sensitive to foods. And you get mood swings, brain fog, uh, or feel toxic from sugar, caffeine, sodas, or junk food. Y yes. Brain fog is my worst enemy because then I can't think and as you know, my work is very creative. Um, do you feel more protected from stress when you're heavy? Um, I can't relate to that. I never was heavier than what I am today, but some may. Do you feel energized by healthy, clean food? Yes, we grow most of our food ourselves, especially over the summer. Um, my husband, again, is a nutritionist, so there's not much food in our house that is not healthy. Um, sometimes there is, but not too much. Um, are you sensitive to, to the preservatives in food? Yes, we don't eat much preserved um, food or processed food anymore. My son is really, really bad with it. Um, most children who suffer from ADHD, they're very sensitive to processed foods, um, as well as sugar and carbs. And that's why a lot of um, children who have who suffer from sensory sensibility as well as ADHD, they are actually having the gift of being an empath. So that kind of um, place part in into all of this. Do you feel more vulnerable to stress when you are thin? Um, and that is something that may not refer to everyone or not everyone can understand that either way. Um, I have to say yes. When I have a time where I lose a lot of weight for whatever reason, um, it might be if I go through some emotional struggle or I just don't take the time to eat. Um, then I feel less protected. I feel more stressed. I feel like um, the world is just coming at me. <laughs> There's nothing in between me and my, my heart anymore. And it's not the truth, but sometimes it does feel like that. 
So those are just questions for you to go through and see, hey, are you actually an empathic eater, food eater? Now I want to introduce to you real quick some strategies um, that I found to be really helpful. For one, drink more water. I always have a water bottle with water next to me, always, because that keeps your energy at flow because your body is 75% made of water. I don't drink enough water. I'm a very bad water drinker. If I had to, I could live without water for a whole day. Um, so I have to really force myself to drink more water. Limit your sugar intake. Place it, replace it with vegetables. Like when you go grocery shopping, instead of going to buy the chocolate, which I did. Um, no, actually I didn't. My husband did. Um, but either way, <laughs> instead of that, um, grab a small bag of the, the little um, carrots. And that's all my, my son gets because I know with sugar and carbs, he just it gets even more overloaded and I can't have that for him because it makes him feel horrible. Um, protein. Protein is very important. A lot of empaths are actually vegetarians or vegans because they feel the energy of the slaughtered animals. Um, I We try to be vegetarian. We still eat some meat, but not much. Um, I don't think I could go vegan. I really do like my eggs. My, my brother is vegan and he does really well. So guess it works but if you can't get protein from meat you can get it through nuts and plants you can also get um, organic plant-based protein powder that we use to add to our cereal in the morning and it fills you up longer protein stabilizes your nervous system and therefore gives you a sense of grounding so that's really important to understand so eat more protein if you feel that um, you are a binge eater uh, or you eat or go to the bad foods, okay? As I, as I said, snacks is really great. Nuts for snacks is really great. Also, organic yogurt can help with some of the protein to get that. Um, eat regularly. Um, empaths are very prone to hypoglycemia. My husband suffered from it for years until we figured out why. He is a strong empath as well. And so we changed his whole habit, eating and he started to eat more protein. He is no longer suffering from hypoglycemia. Part of that also helps those who suffer from diabetes. It can really improve some of the symptoms of diabetes. Um, um, what else? Healthy fats. Eggs, avocado, coconut oil, olive oil, <sighs> flax seeds. We put flax seeds in our... Um, and our oatmeal in the morning and we blend it so you don't have the crunchy flex seed but you can also just get the grounded one but actually the the whole seeds they're better for you than the grounded one because they still have the oil in it you can also just buy flex seed oil and add that into your smoothie that's what we do too it's good for health and eye health <laughs> it's good for eye health um by the way my eyes are not bad i just like my glasses <laughs> I, I, my right eye is, is a little weak, um, but it's not too bad. Um, and limit your coffee. I know, we all get addicted to coffee. I just had a cup tomorrow, and I'm not a coffee drinker, really. I don't drink it every morning. I can't. Um, sometimes I do when I feel... It's it's more the smell. It just, like, there's some more, like, a, um, emotional connection to it because my mom always used to drink coffee so it's more of a reminder sitting on the coffee table with my mom and have conversations so I love that that's just for me why I drink coffee so I just go to decaf coffee instead of caffeine um, step away from sodas those who drink Mountain Dew crap um, that's the worst for impact to take now you're having a whole nutrition class here and a pep talk on your nutrition but it's really important if you want to um, if not feel drained and overstimulated the whole time that really gets you into a mode of frustration and you just want to hide. Those are really, really things to consider and important for, for empath. Eat for energy, not just to eat, but eat for energy. That means um, positive foods, organic foods, um, life foods, which means unprocessed food unprocessed foods. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, I can't afford all that. 
It's not true, really. Um, when we started out this journey, we didn't buy organic food because we thought it's too expensive. Our budget actually stayed the same because with more healthier food, the more nutrition you get, the la longer it lasts. And you can always buy seasonal, especially right now, it's the strawberries and blueberries and blackberries that are in season. You can get them cheaper, but it keeps you full longer. Um, and therefore your budget doesn't really change much and it's also a trust issue i think where we where we started to really just trust that god provided us with certain foods and if we go and really do it because we want to nourish our bodies he will provide and so far it really has been um, amazing you can even start a little indoor garden if you want to it's quite simple if you have any questions um i can give you some research on that or some resources not research resources there's a lot of things that you can really do okay um empath with clean diet are usually healthier stronger and less fragile because what it does if you have a horrible diet and you binge eat and you overeat and you crave certain things your energy frequency goes down and the lower it is, the less protected you are and the more you receive everything from everyone else. And that means um, burnout, uh, depressive faces, anxiety, panic attacks, all that, it all plays together, guys. You can't separate any of that and that's why it's so great to be married to a guy that I can do the work with together. Um, it's really awesome to just be able to do that together. Um, keep um, another thing that I read today. I thought it was really interesting. If you tend to um, overeat or you eat when there are certain triggers and you go to your pantry or your refrigerator, um, it says to keep a meditation pillow in front of your fridge um, or uh, um, yeah, in front of your, your fridge. And I thought it was quite interesting. And the reason behind it is if you see that as a reminder, you remind yourself instead of eating, I probably should go meditate on what the trigger just was and how I can better um, cope with it and overcome it. But a better idea for me personally, because my son would probably take that pillow away from me, um, is to write just a note on your refrigerator or your pantry that says, and I wrote it actually down so I don't forget, what are you trying to compensate? Go meditate. Maybe that's a good thing to write on your refrigerator if you feel eating out of the ordinary. Um, what are you trying to compensate? Go meditate. It's literally like your pantry is talking to you. <laughs> Not, come on now, don't open the door, just go, go meditate. Uh, go out for a walk. That's sometimes good. If you if you have a just go around the block around your house um, one or two times, it really does help. That's sometimes what I do. I just go outside, um, or I just go for the chocolate. I know, I know, I shouldn't do it, but it's good. It's organic chocolate. That's a good excuse. Come on, people. It's a good excuse, right? Um, but either way, that is giving you a little bit of a short and brief insight into the reasoning why empath may struggle with those problems. And just because I'm thin doesn't mean that I may not struggle with that. My body just has a different way of dealing with it by keeping my muscles always tense, like I always feel sore. Um, or I run, I run marathons at night uh, because I just, yeah. And that doesn't give me much sleep, right? So there's a different way that I need to deal with that, but I'm aware of it. And I do have a sugar problem. My husband is already telling me that a lot of times. And it gives me brain fog. So it's just something really to understand, um, especially when we're in a state like that, then there, there's nothing for us to, to do about it. I feel like I always talk to myself, but I see people come in and out and I see people responding. But when I use it on my computer, I don't see it on the side and I don't know why. I don't see any, any comments. Is that normal? I don't know. Is that just the computer version of it? Maybe not. Maybe nobody is commenting and I'm just thinking it because I always get notifications and so I don't know. I don't see it on my phone. But either way, I hope this is going to help you. My husband and I actually thought about creating a course around that um, or part of a, I thought about creating a survival kit for empath warriors. 
um, an online course where we would include the nutritional part as well um, that could help but that would be more of my husband's side because again he is the the expert in, in all of that he's writing his dissertation he's the certified nutrition counselor and the herbalist um, but all those things are just really part and important for empath so if that really is of support to you I would love to hear from you and hear if that really helped you gave you something to think about and maybe to understand your body a little bit more and to create more awareness. With that, have an amazing, amazing day today. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about next week, but I'm pretty sure I will find something. Maybe we'll talk about relationships and why it's so hard for empaths to create the relationships that they want. Yeah? Maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. I don't know. But I will talk about something next week. Uh, either way, have a fantastic day today. I hope you're all doing great. Uh, let me know if there are any questions, any feedback, anything you would like to know about or more about or learn more about. And then I'll talk to you again later. Have a great day. Enjoy your day. Bye.